welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 12, Part 1, Word Parts and Anatomy Pertaining to the Integumentary System, or more commonly known as the skin. Chapter 12 does not have a whole lot of word parts or anatomy. That part of the chapter is easy. What makes Chapter 12 particularly difficult is the wide variety of pathologies, in particular the skin lesions and the pathologies that cause the skin lesion. However, as usual, I am going to do a brief review here with you over the word parts and anatomy. Here we go. What is a word part for skin? Well, there are several options here. First of all, if we're looking at combining forms, you could have said dermo, D-E-R-M slash O, or dermato, D-E-R-M-A-T slash O. Either of these mean skin, although again, some terms prefer dermo, other terms prefer dermato. So you're going to have to memorize which terms use which combining form. We also have a third one that's used less frequently, and that's cutaneo. C-U-T-A-N-E slash O. We also have a suffix that refers to skin. Do you remember what the suffix is that refers to skin? Well, that's derma, hyphen, D-E-R-M-A. Next, we have word parts referring to the nail, either the fingernail or the toenail. There are two of them. Do you remember what those are? The first one that's probably used more frequently is on Nico, O N Y C H slash O. The second one is Unguo, U N G U slash O. Either of these refer to nail. Again, you're going to have to memorize which term prefers which word part. Most frequently, again, on Nico is the one that's used. Next, we have a word part that refers to keratin. Literally, these word parts mean hard or horn-like. What is the word part that refers to keratin? Well, again, we have two choices here. The first one is kerato, K-E-R-A-T slash O. And the second one is keratino, K-E-R-A-T-I-N slash O. Literally, these combining forms mean hard or horn-like, but we use them to refer to keratin, which is a component of the skin. Next, we have two word parts relating to color, and we learned these way back in Chapter 1. What is the word part that refers to red? Well, that's erythro, E-R-Y-T-H-R slash O. And what is the word part that refers to black? That's meleno, M-E-L-A-N slash O. Okay, and now what is the word part that refers to sebum? Well, that's pretty straightforward. It's SIBO, S-E-B slash O. And what is the word part that refers to sweat?
That's hydro, H-I-D-R slash O. One way to remember that one is you may have heard of the term hydrate. Well, that refers to water, to add water to something. Well, sweat is fluid, it's water, we all know that. So that might be a little mnemonic to help you remember sweat is hydro. And finally, we have a word part that refers to flushing. Do you remember the word part for flushing? Well, this one's a little trickier. This is erythheme e. E-R-Y-T-H-E-M slash E. Unusual, it requires the slash E rather than the slash O as a combining vowel. You'll notice that the beginning of the word part looks just like the word part for red, erythro again, but this is erytheme slash E. That refers to flushing, which again is when your skin would turn red. Okay, now that we've reviewed the word parts, let's go on and look at the anatomy. And I am going to go over this with you and kind of help you break it down. Sometimes it gets a little confusing. First of all, the skin has three major layers to it. The first major layer is called the epidermis, E-P-I-D-E-R-M-I-S. And remember, epi means above or outside. So epidermis makes sense. It's above the dermis, literally. This is the outermost layer of skin, and it is composed of epithelial tissues, E-P-I-T-H-E-L-I-A-L. -E and you should remember epithelial from chapter 2. Do you remember what the general definition of epithelial is? Well, these are the tissues that provide a protective covering for the external and interior surfaces of the body. Now, the next major layer of skin is the dermis, D-E-R-M-I-S. The dermis is a thick layer of living tissue that contains connective tissue, vessels, and nerve fibers. And finally, we have the subcutaneous layer, S-U-B-C-U-T-A-N-E-O-U-S, and then layer. And if you look at the word parts, this makes sense. It literally means beneath the skin. Sub is beneath, cutaneo refers to skin, and then us means pertaining to. Now, the subcutaneous layer is composed primarily of adipose tissue, A-D-I-P-O-S-E, and you should remember what adipose means. What does adipose mean? Well, it refers to fat. It's a fatty layer. And this is a fatty layer that connects the skin to the surface muscles. Again, the main part of skin is the dermis. The subcutaneous layer is beneath the dermis, beneath the skin. Okay, so we have the three major layers of skin, the epidermis, literally meaning above the dermis, the dermis, and then the subcutaneous layer. Now the epidermis, which again is that outermost layer of skin, has several subparts. Keratin, K E R. A-T-I-N, is a fibrous, water-repellent protein. Soft keratin is the primary component of the epidermis, while hard keratin composes the hair and nails. And the epidermis can be divided into two layers, or sublayers. It has the outer layer known as the squamous layer, S-Q-U-A-M-O-U-S, -O -O squamous. This is the uppermost layer of the epidermis, and it consists of flat, scaly cells. Then we have the basal layer, B-A-S-A-L. 
basal layer is the lowest layer of the epidermis. And there's an important type of cell that composes the basal layer. And this cell is known as the melanocyte. M-E-L-A-N-O-C-Y-T-E-S. Melanocytes are cells in the basal layer that produce a black pigment known as melanin. M-E-L-A-N-I-N. And melanin is what gives skin its color in terms of how dark or light it is. People with dark skin have a lot of melanin in their skin. People who are lighter skinned have less or hardly any melanin. Melanin protects the skin from ultraviolet light. Okay, well that's it for the word parts and the anatomy. There's not a whole lot in this chapter. Isn't that a good thing? Although again, we make up for it with the pathologies. So now let's go ahead and do some more practice. What is the term for the middle layer of the skin that contains vessels and nerve fibers? That's the dermis, D-E-R-M-I-S. And what is the term for the outermost layer of the skin? That's the epidermis, E-P-I-D-E-R-M-I-S. The fibrous, water-repellent protein that composes the epidermis as well as the hair and nails is known as what? That's keratin. K-E-R-A-T-I-N. What is the term for the cells that produce a dark pigment that protects the body from ultraviolet light? Those are the melanocytes, M-E-L-A-N-O-C-Y-T-E-S. What is the term for the layer that connects the skin to the surface muscles? That's the subcutaneous layer, S-U-B-C-U-T. A-N-E-O-U-S. And the epidermis is composed of what type of tissue? That's the epithelial tissue, E-P-I-T-H-E-L-I-A-L. -E what is the lower layer of the epidermis called? That's the basal layer, B-A-S-A-L. And the subcutaneous layer is composed of what type of tissue? Well, that's the adipose tissue, A-D-I-P-O-S-E. And finally, what is the term for the upper layer of the epidermis? Well, that's the squamous layer, S-Q-U-A-M-O-U-S. Okay, well, that covers word parts and anatomy. And in the next episode, we're going to start diving into those pathologies. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology.